Catholic Church designated St. Andrew Kagwamu Dwagumia Mugongo, one of the Uganda matters as the patron saint of catechists, teachers and families. He was a Mnyoro from Buganga Izi County, present day Chibali district on the border of Buganda and Bunyoro regions. But, like many other Uganda mothers who are brought to the king's palace as captives, little has been written about Kagwa's place of birth and his childhood years. NTV went out to seek more information about this matter, and our efforts led us to two men, Kakoza Chizito Adieri and Ponsia Nokubali Kajira Tenyi, who we found in Koki, Chibari district. The two men claimed they were relatives of St. Kagwa. My great-grandfather was a brother to the father of St. Andrew Kagwa. Kagamba. And the Kagwa, Bazari Bangani Jaja, Azaratata. To prove their ancestry, they named the heads of more than five generations before Kagwa's father, Peter Kahwa Kabajenga. Rukumagwa, Gazari Banyama Itaya. Nyama Itaya, Gazari Wabiadogo. Biadogo, Gazari Wamihanda. Batabare, a son of Kazova, Kazova, son of Bijenge. Bijenge is the father to Petru Kahua, the father of St. Andrea Kahua. This nudged us to probe them further for additional information about the matter. They said his original Chinyoro name was Kawa, born to Peter Kahua Kabajenga and Lady Kasemeiri. Kahua yataba wangi Buganda, yataba wano yalina abadu na abazana. Yataba wano wali mukazi wu mkuru, Kasemeiri. Mbiasoko kuwasa, yataba yazala ndiri ya kagua. Yemuzala na abana, muendanga bawala, andiri ya kagua, kumi. Andiri ya kagua ya liwa kumi na umu, ngayimuano umurenzi. Kabajenga was a powerful soldier in Bunyoro Kingdom, tasked with safeguarding the border of Buganda and Bunyoro to stop Baganda from raiding and annexing Bunyoro land. So Baganda used to cross over from Buwekura Hill to here. So they wanted the, the Mukama wanted the, the Petro Kahua to be the but one day in 1863, in Kabajenga's absence, the Baganda, under the command of Kagwabule Samvu, stormed his camp, killed and took many captives, including his children, one of whom was the young Kagwa. He was not there by that time, but they happened to, to take uh, his wife and children. Kagu handed over the 10-year-old Kagwa to a king's chancellor called Seboa, who later presented him to King Mutesa I for royal favors. Serving as a page in the Kabaka's palace, many in there, including the king himself, liked Kagwa for his intelligence and ability to play many musical instruments. Later, Mutesa's successor, Kabaka Mwanga, appointed him the palace Mugowa or bandmaster. Kagwa is one of the pioneer Christians who was recruited at the time the missionaries came. As the bandmaster Om Goa, Kagwa was powerful and influential. He was a wealthy man and could easily marry more than one wife as per tradition. But he chose one, Clara Batudi, with whom he had a daughter. Due to his intelligence, Kagwa was popular with the missionaries. He would teach fellow Christians and this made him loved and hated in equal measure by some royals. When Kabaka Mwanga sentenced the Christians to death because of their faith, he chose to spare Kagwa for his ability to play European musical instruments. But the king's chancellor and the katikiro or prime minister insisted he must also die. On 26 May 1886, Kagwa was captured on the orders of Katikiro Mkasa and killed at Munyonyo near Kampara. His people in Bugangaizi learned of his death some years later. Bayi mba kayi mba musomero, akai kwa takuwa julizi. Niyewa katu nga kwanti ya kagaga manga. Tandile ya tata kagwa nzendi munyolo, ewa fwe bugangazi okumpi nensalo. Haurwa ni kutegi ya eh, andile ya kagwa munyolo, chukanga tutenga chikuru. So the one of the relatives called Bazuwane asked himself, became inquisitive. Couldn't that Kagwa be the one who was taken, was the son of his uncle? Other residents here say that they heard Kagwa's story from Dennis Kamuka, a survivor of martyrdom. 
awo natande kyo kumanya anti e eh, nande yakagwa gwe mpulira azali bweno kuba bali bonna gabagenda kubatta yene batamutta we are also told that as the church was on the verge of giving up the search for Kagwa's origin, he reportedly communicated to two Christians in Koki through dreams and directed them accordingly. And gave signs which are uh, embedded on the rock. Christians here have been flocking this place since 2006 for pilgrimage and some attest to the miracles they have seen and experienced. The church now plans to revamp the shrine and write books about Kagwa to draw in tourists and the proceeds would help maintain the shrine and support other projects. Projects like schools, hospitals, and the beautiful churches. We are planning to have a retreat center. And with that retreat center, we can also have accommodations. So we can benefit from them. Solomon Kawesa, NTV.